So welcome, Julian. Julian Russell, it's lovely to be um, to be chatting with you today. Uh, Julian, you're one of the presenters at the NLP conference next year. Yay! Um, Yay. <laughs> we're so looking forward to it because I know you presented at the um, conference that's just gone and it was very popular. Um, so do tell us a little bit more about yourself and your presentation, which is entitled Empower Yourself Within Your, with your Creative Mind. Now, I want to run a session that is really going to support everybody um, finding resources that they don't usually access. So, you know, we've all learned to access resources in NLP, but um, the creative mind approach um, accesses resources that, are, you know, are broader and bigger and deeper than the normal NLP approach. So I, I run a 20 day personal evolution program called the Life Talent Program, and I'm trying to make it the most powerful personal transformation program in the world that's my that's what I'm attempting to do that's so a good I, aim yeah it's a great aim isn't it <laughs> and um and so I'm trying I try to include the state of the art um you know evolutions that are going on and this yeah. is an evolution creative mind is an evolution from Steve Gilligan he was he's a primary teacher of Milton Erickson's work he was around at the very beginning of NLP yeah shared a house with Judith Delosier Frank Puslik um Jude, uh, um, who else? Um, I can't think there was a third person as well. And so they were all sort of young people at university together. But he went off and followed Ericsson. So he's a sort of primary teacher of the Ericksonian material, but he formed um, the, Associ uh, the International Association for Generative Change with Robert Dills, yes. which, which combines the two streams. And that in itself is a great evolution of NLP, but Steve's taken creative mind is an evolution beyond that and I just think it's great work so I'm including it in my programs and I thought why don't why not teach this at the NLP conference um, something that's new and state of the art and um, there are lots of things I love about it one is you know in terms of resources um, what about having nature as a resource do we really oh. access nature enough as a resource? you know mother earth of, of which we are we're not separate from Mother Earth. That's, yeah. that's a sort of a, a fallacy. We, with every breath we're connected, we're breathing air. You know, with every bite of food, with every drink of water, we are Mother Earth. And there's this very, very powerful resource that we can tap into. So that's one resource. Also, um, collective mind and the community of mind, that every single person on the planet, every philosophical stream, every cultural group is access to us is available to us as a resource. Yeah. And, you know, already, you know, just from NLP, I'm, you know, I do things like, if I want persistence or perseverance, uh, you know, and um, dogged determination, I will, you know, see here and feel Nelson Mandela. Yeah. Um, because when he went to prison with a 27 year old, 27 prison sentence, he kept his, he kept his resource states. Yeah. Um, so I'm already doing that, but there's, we can go deeper into the cultures of the world to find resources. Um, and then I think that, you know, we have to be so careful with spirituality, for example, but, um, you know, but that each of us has a connection to some sense of the universe that is bigger than ourselves. Definitely. Um, and it's unique to each of us. Some people, there's some thread of that to do with the tradition from their childhood. Other people have, have got connected to traditions in other ways, but actually there's no need to be connected to a tradition. If I look at the sky or if I look at cosmology or the Big Bang, I can feel some awe about existence. And so that's uh, another form of resource that we can include. Um, and so that's what I want to do. I want to help soup up people's resources during the course of the workshop. And we'll have a gu big guided meditation. That's the center. Oh. And I'll also, um, I will present some key points from um, Creative Mind and um, then there'll be the gig, big guided meditation and then we'll have a sharing in small groups and then we'll come back and share in a large group and all of that within 90 minutes. So. <laughs> that sounds absolutely lovely. I'm, I'm all up for a guided meditation any day of the week. <laughs> I love them as well because, you know, when, when I'm running them, I'm also doing them. So I get yeah. the time too. Yeah. So. It's those ones where I'm just, uh, you know, I now just sit quietly for 15 minutes. My brain doesn't do quiet. If there's something to guide me, yeah. then it's much easier for me to focus. So, um, so I love that idea of the guided meditation. I will Absolutely. be there. <laughs> Great, fantastic. And also in something like the conference, you know, there's such a lot of cognitive input. So actually just have some time. Let me have some downtime, but sort of nurturing 
yeah. down, downtime. That's what I want to create. Yeah, that sounds that sounds that sounds absolutely heavenly. Right. So, I mean, you've already said a little bit about what delegates will take away from your session. A guided meditation is a great start. Um, what else will delegates take away but, from your session? I mean, an overview of the creative mind model. You know, so they'll get some sense of that. And there are other elements that are super interesting, like um, you know, one of the old sayings from, um, I think it was Jay Haley, one of the early Ericksonian people, which mm -hmm. is the solution is the problem. You know, what we try and work out, solution to our problems with our cognitive minds, maybe what's actually holding us back. Yeah. And then, but Erickson also said, the problem is the solution. And so what Steve is doing is saying, um, actually there's something in you that needs to be heard. There's a voice in you that needs to be heard. There's something that needs to be included that you haven't found a way of including it. So rather than just saying that's a problem, access resources, be more powerful. So actually, what is that voice saying to me? What is it in me that needs to be heard? Yeah. And so I think that's really, really treating with respect, difficult feelings, difficult emotions, mm. even things from, you know, um, you know, traumatic things from our childhood. There's a message that we need to include and learn from mm -hmm. and that we haven't always integrated. And I, I love that part of the approach. Oh, um, sounds, sounds lovely sounds very gentle which yeah. um, as you say is sort of that that oasis in in the middle of all the um cognitive stuff going on in the conference it sounds very lovely no good good yeah well that's you know that's um really attuning to um our limbic system and to the right brain and mm -hmm. all of that um is just such important work you know if you have a generative emotional state um connecting with people that's the most powerful thing. People notice it as soon as you walk in the room. I mean, actually, true charisma is 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 not the rah 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 sort of thing, you know. Yeah. Like, hey, I'm so great. Let me tell you about myself. <laughs> but true charisma is a sort of when you're in your body, centered, feeling yourself, yeah. and connecting emotionally with the people that you're you're with. You know, yeah. that's true charisma. Yeah. Oh, that's so lovely. So lovely. So is there anything that delegates can do um, beforehand to give them a deeper experience of your session? Well, I, you know, I was thinking about this. I thought, you know, it's like, um, come prepared to relax. So, you know, turn your phone off, you know, yeah. close to the door, you know, make sure you've either just had a cup of tea or you brought one with you, you know, and just sort of chill, chill out. It's a sort of, you know, chill out because there will be a lot of input, but, you know, the cognitive mind, you know, there's this wonderful book called the master and the emissary about um neuroscience um, mm. which is, um and it's called the master and the emissary because the research now shows that the right brain is what experiences the world and the left brain just makes maps of of, of what the right brain does uh -huh. so, the, so the left brain is a communicator yeah for, for the right brain however the left, you know, with, with the way that culture has gone since the Enlightenment, but before that, you know, over history, the left brain is trying to do a coup d'etat, you know, it's trying to take over yeah. and, and dominate the right brain. But actually, the real source of everything is the right brain. Mm -hmm. And so actually just coming back and saying, let's value the intuitive, let's value the, the somatic, the body orientated, yeah. let's value the unconscious let's that has primacy not just the left brain and so just to do a session where that has primacy um, and we're still learning you know we're still yeah. learning but just in a slightly different different way. absolutely i've just jotted down the name of that book i will be um i will be going on a well-known book resource after this and, and uh, it's a it really out. tough book i have to say it's a really tough book i've been listening to it on audible because oh okay yeah. know, i'm just not educated you know the great thing with audible is you can you know, he'll talk about these things that you don't understand, but he's on to the next sentence, you know, so you don't get stuck on a single sentence. Yeah, yeah. So then I'm in the sort of three quarters of the way through it at the moment, and then I'll listen to it a second time. Hopefully I'll understand it better. I shall do that then whilst I'm walking the dog, because I do Audible. I do Audible non-fiction whilst walking the dog. So it sounds, exactly, like, a, yeah. sounds like a better option than getting stuck on the one well, sentence. Well, I, I would recommend it for this one because it's really quite high powered, you know. So. All right. I'll, I'll allow a while then. <laughs> Actually, it's very left brain to talk. It's a very thick <laughs> left brain book talking about the right brain. <laughs> well, that's interesting. <laughs> Certain incongruence there, but hey, yeah, no. <laughs> singing and dancing at the end of every chapter, you know. Um, so <laughs> that, that'll go down well on the dog walk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
So, yeah, so, um, I mean, as you know, because you presented at this year's conference, next yeah. year's conference is also in a virtual environment. Yeah. Um, so how are you planning to add value in, in a virtual environment? Well, actually, I think virtual environments can be great. And so, so the main thing is, um, a right, the first thing I do is I have people go into breakout rooms before I do anything else, because uh -huh. people think that they, get, they can come and watch, you know, they can come and watch something while they're, you know, doing their email or whatever they're dis yes. disassociated and so I get people into breakout rooms right at the beginning to talk to some other human beings so yeah. that we're really present so that's the first yeah. thing I do I, I, I get people present and the other thing is I really strongly recommend that people have their cameras on and I, I, yes. I, I really invite it yeah. um, and you know um, I will I do Q&A and I do chat and stuff like that because there is really a lot that we can do to get ourselves engaged and involved in the virtual world um and it's really amazing how how well the human brain does that you know we yeah. can you know you and i've been talking for a, you know 20 minutes now we we feel connected with each other yes isn't that amazing that we can do that through technology Absolutely. and so that's that's the feeling that i want to create because i'm interested in us engaging the somatic self even though we're doing this through um a you know a, an online environment yeah. And so then the guided meditation is really connected. And then going into break, what I, what I do is with the breakout rooms afterwards, as I say, stay in a deeply connected state, but open your eyes and see that there are other people on the screen. So we stay in that connected state. So when so hopefully people are still in the strong body mind connected state mm. when they go into the breakout rooms and then That's have a little private conversation with two or three people. That's so lovely. And, and I think you're right in, in terms of the having the video on because um, it, it's I know it's challenging as a presenter if you're presenting to a screen with only one or two people on it. Yeah. But it's also you're right. It's that it's it's that if, if if someone has their camera turned off, then the whole visual it's denying other people the opportunity Absolutely. to have yeah. the visual element, isn't it? And, um, and also as a presenter, I'm responding to the cues from the audience yeah. and during the guided meditation. I mean, during guided meditations, I do say to people, look, if you want to turn your camera off, if you feel self-conscious, do that. But mm -hmm. please, can we have quite a lot of people keep their camera on because yeah. I will respond to the cues in the group. Yeah. And we also have to be, you know, kind as well. That it, sometimes people are in locations with bad internet connections or yeah. uh, they haven't got the latest PC. So, you know, I think, there's, you know, we, we want to be kind as well. But as much as I can, I always encourage people. I call, you know, I mention them by name. So I sort of say, hey, Joe, you know, if you can turn your camera on. And sometimes they'll come back and say, oh, you know, my PC is really old. The internet's bad. Are you OK if I do this? And I say, sure, why not? Yeah, yeah. But um, but it really helps. And also it's um, we the brain is so amazing. We see all those pictures on the screen. We will pick up. We will empathize. Um, we will connect with the other people. And so some of so we create a field. Yeah. Not just individual experience. It's actually much more powerful when you have a field that's being created, that you get drawn into a field. Yeah. And that can be done online, not yeah. as easily as face to face, but it can be done online. Yeah. It, you know, I do it online. I think I think people have been pleasantly surprised, haven't they? How, you know, when we were thrust into this environment of, of suddenly everything became virtual. Um, I, th I think a lot of people, including myself, have been pleasantly surprised as to how much easier it is than we ever anticipated it was going to be. <laughs> I mean, I do deep personal transformation work with people online in groups um, and it's really powerful. It's just mm -hmm. as powerful as face to face there's a little bit of you know my intuitions aren't quite so good because my our bodies aren't present in the same room but mm. basically the work can be just as deep yeah. in the online environment it's really powerful and it's very intimate and also the other thing that's interesting is that you know some there's a degree of safety that people mm. feel when they're really opening up and uh, uh, you know, into something deep in themselves but from the comfort of their own home yeah um and um, so you don't have to get on the tube afterwards and, you know, sort of wiping your tears away or feeling vulnerable <laughs> and open, you know. You know um, yeah, on the tube. Doesn't work, does it? <laughs> no, it probably does work. But yeah, because if people are very, in England, people are very polite. They'll sort of, you know, look away, you know, yeah. so, so, pretend they haven't noticed. But, yeah. Um, yeah, so. Uh.
Lovely. So, yeah. so you know, I mean, you've, you've been to the conference before as a presenter and as a delegate. So what does the NLP International Conference mean to you? Well, um, firstly, I think it's just so amazing because this is, the, you know, the premier place in the world for the international community to get together and share ideas about NLP and related fields and exchange those ideas and find out what's going on. It's absolutely amazing. And you, as, as you know, Karen, I'm sort of encouraging you to keep it online because then we can get everybody from everywhere in the world together. And, um, and also there's that wonderful thing about um, the fact the video is available, is it six months after, six months, yeah. you know, the conference. So that is, fun, you know, that really is great because then there are so, when I was looking at when I'm presenting, there are so many other great presenters at exactly the same time as me, which I, sh I shall scold you for later. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the fact is that if you, you know, if you go to one talk, you know, you can watch the others later. Isn't that fantastic? You know, exactly. That's brilliant. The other thing I want to mention, which is that, um, that I was involved in the very first sort of precursor of the NLP conference in 1987 with um, Joe Hogg. And we set this, had the first one at Regent's College in London. Yeah, yeah. I sort of feel it's so great to, to see how it's evolved, uh, you know, over time and become such a big event, you know. The same and you don't event. look old enough. <laughs> <laughs> I know, exactly. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Yeah, it's really scary how long I've been doing this stuff for, because I trained in what, 1986, you right. know, NLP practitioner. And then I, from about 1987, I had an NLP school with, for various reasons, so people I was working with. And I met Steve and Robert Dilts. I tell you, he still looked young, but then he just looked like a he looked like a university schoolboy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> in the room, you know. And um, so NLP is obviously good for the health. It is good for the health. Yeah, it yeah. is. Yeah. And then that you know that was quite an exciting time because we were bringing NLP to the UK. Yes. Yeah. And also, uh, one of the places where it really made a difference was actually in um, management, the, uh, uh, modern management. Um, communication skills and training yeah. based on um, a lot of it is based on NLP they just don't call it NLP yeah exactly so. exactly and we know and we know exactly <laughs> um, so yeah it was really it was really a fun time and um, yeah brilliant so so just for everybody listening um so julian is presenting at the nlp conference next year you're presenting on sunday the 22nd of may at uh, 11 o'clock bst will be in british summer time by then yay uh and it's a 90 minute presentation so uh lovely amount of time to get deeply embroiled in the um a in workshop the a workshop not a presentation a we'll, workshop we'll, yeah, we'll become deeply engaged and discover our resources more perfect more. well it sounds absolutely lovely so thank you for um spending time with us julian today and, and explaining a bit more about what your presentation is going to entail I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to it great lovely to see you karen thanks thank you so much thank you julian